was a criminal defense lawyer for a little over 20 years before I started this chocolate business. And I loved the law, I loved everything about it, and I was really passionate about it. But I reached a point where I needed something new, I needed something else. And then it came to me to make chocolate from scratch, but I didn't know what that meant from scratch. I had no idea that chocolate came from a bean. But within a few months of that, I was in the Amazon studying how farmers can influence the flavor of chocolate by how they treat the bean post-harvest. I told those farmers that I was gonna profit share with them, and they looked at me like, what? But we not only give them cash, we translate our financial statements into whatever language they need so that they can understand how we arrived at the profit share calculation. And they need to be recognized, not only by the money that they make, but by recognizing that they are partners with us, and we couldn't do this without them. So I go buy all these cocoa beans in these countries, Honduras, Ecuador, Tanzania, Philippines. I source them myself, so I travel a lot. And we have a program called Chocolate University where we involve the young people in the neighborhood of our factory with our business in both elementary and middle school and high school. And we involve them with students in these other countries. And one of those programs is at the Malagos Elementary School in Davao, Philippines. And when I was last there, I was talking with the principal and teachers about what they need. And we've had a relationship with that school for a while, and they told me that there were a number of students on the malnourished watch list. So I said, you know what? We need to address these nutrition needs before we start helping with curriculum needs. So what I did is I asked the PTA of that little jungle school, could you guys make a product that I could buy? I'll sell it. And then with all of the profit, 100% of the profit, we will fund a nutrition program for your school. And they said, absolutely. And so they've made this product called Tablia. They put 800 of those on my container, and that turned into 185,000 meals for those kids. So these kids who are malnourished now are getting fed. And here's the cool part about this. No donations required. This is a 100% self-sustaining program that we don't need a grant, we don't need the government. All we need is a PTA to roll up their sleeves. They have a nutritional stake in the outcome, and they did the work. And all I did as a company was sell the product. And it's a great product, and we sold out in four or five weeks. And so I believe this is revolutionary because it's, it's a partnership between a small business and a PTA with kids who have a need. Right by my factory, uh, Pipkin Middle School, they have 100 kids who are at risk. And so when I found this out, I went to the PTA and the principal of the little school by my factory and said, hey, do you want to know what is happening in Davao, Philippines? The PTA there is making a product. Can you do that? Now let me tell you, there's some red tape uh, in America, and it's a lot harder to get it done in America than it is in Davao, Philippines. But we're doing it and 100 kids will be fed that are now not getting fed. You know what, even in America, kids fall through the safety net. And so we have to do this. And so again, it's an example of small business partnering with a PTA. So it's not about the chocolate. It's about the chocolate. And here's what I mean. It's got to be about the chocolate because if we don't make a great chocolate product that is award winning, we can't do these programs. And so we keep that at the forefront of our mind as we're in business every day. Because we know that we're working on something bigger than just a chocolate bar, but we have to remember that that chocolate bar has to be perfect uh, and as, as high quality as we can make it so that people will want it and that our business will be sustained.